Corey, uh, you've, you've been with Pixar since 93, 1993? Right. Yeah, 93. So this is the 14th Pixar theater release, right? Right. I mean, tell us what the business is like today versus 20 years ago. Well, yeah, quite different, obviously. Uh, you know, in, in 1993, we had just kind of gotten the green light for Toy Story, and we're in production on that. And the release of, of that first computer animated film um, was it was crazy and and nobody had seen anything like it and and now this summer i think there are five animated uh films being released in a three-month window so um just the advancements and and how many more animated films are, are out there in the world um has changed significantly but uh here at pixar we're still doing the the same thing trying to make great films it's the same thing you're nodding your head a lot dan you 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 joined in 2001 yeah yeah, the month Monsters Inc. came out. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is what's interesting. This is your first feature. Mm -hmm. uh, you've worked obviously on a, on a number of films. How did that come about? How did you get this opportunity? Well, I think I worked in the story department as a story artist on Cars, the first Cars, and Toy Story 3. And I made my own film on the weekends, a live action comedy uh, feature. And I think that those things, just having a story background and, and, and doing my own film, really helped everybody feel confident with me taking, uh, taking over yeah, this. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, Corey, there's, there's a lot of stories of homegrown talent here at Pixar, people who right. have worked on a bunch of the big name films, and then, you know, here's your big opportunity. I think we saw that with Brave as well. Yeah. Um, talk to us about grooming the talent, so to speak, here at Pixar, and holding on to that talent, to, yeah. you know, for the future. Right. Yeah, I think it's it's really the philosophy of, of John Lasseter and um, the team here to do just that. After Toy Story, we knew that we wanted to hang on to the people who'd made the first ever computer computer animated film. We were like, we don't want these people to go away and, and go work elsewhere. We want to keep them here and keep grooming people and keep mentoring people into leadership positions. And so then, you know, Andrew Stanton, Pete Doctor came out of that philosophy and it's kind of just kept going. Um, and it, it's really, really important. And, and we groom directors and producers and, and every level of, uh, of talent here. And uh, it's very, very important. People come and they stay for a long time. You feel very <laughs> supported when yeah. you're New here, exactly. you know, definitely get the support of Pete Doctor, who wrote the original film or directed the original film, and uh, it's a really great learning environment. Uh, Steven Spielberg was quoted recently as as basically talking about the traditional film industry imploding, and I, I think to give it more context that. We're going to see fewer films in theaters. It's going to be an even bigger experience. And a lot of it just right. has to do with technology, people having way more options at home, not necessarily having to go to the theater. Right. Um, both of you, no doubt, are working on the next big thing <laughs> at Pixar. And yet, when these are films that can take four or five years to develop, and the theater-going experience might change even more by then, how do you approach all that? Dan? I think that our our hope, I mean, we can't control yeah. what's going on. Uh, our focus is really just to keep making good stories. We spend a lot of time on our stories. That's what that four years is really spent doing. And our hope is if we keep making uh, great stories, hopefully people will keep seeing them. Yeah. And I mean, the, 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 the story for Monsters University came out of, you know, a story meeting when you were thinking of, you guys were thinking, how can we bring them right. back? You know, can we Right, yeah. just to see if there even was a story there. I mean, because um, if there wasn't a good story, we wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Um, but we got really excited about telling Mike's story and, and, and telling a different kind of story than, we, than we've seen before, even in our own films. Yeah. So. Yeah, we wanted to go back and see how these two became friends and, and also see a story about a character that doesn't get everything that they want. That was something very original that we hadn't seen before. Right. You guys are always trying to push the limits of technology, too, and we'll have more on that later in the broadcast on even the changes to lighting techniques and the technology behind that to stay up on the competition. But I, yeah. I believe we're in the Steve Jobs building here at Pixar. Um, yeah. Court, what do you think the legacy of Steve Jobs is as it pertains to Pixar, you know, what, what he left this company with? Yeah, I think um, it's so. What he left was is so crucial to our everyday experience here at Pixar and and the the way we do business. And it's really about continuing to take risks and continuing to be inventive and and don't get comfortable uh, in our own skin, kind of thing. And um, because he was a or huge in these chairs. or in these chairs. <laughs> <laughs> So I think um, I think he's he's with us here every day, um, kind of reminding us not to get complacent and and not to not to sit back.
I mean, and, and, and when, you're, when you're making a film, Dan, are you thinking, uh, what if we could do this with technology? I mean, it is story first, right. but you, your, your, your wheels have to be spinning on, on what new technology allows you to do. Yeah, I mean, but like you said, it is story first. Yeah. And a lot of the times, I, I sometimes feel like I don't know everything that computer animation can do, and, and sometimes that's good, and that's where yeah. Corey steps in and <laughs> says, well, we can't do that, but we'll find a way. Right. Uh, Pixar is really great about finding a way. Right. What about uh, what happens next? I mean, once a movie is in the theaters, is it out of your hands? There's a massive <laughs> marketing machine behind it. I'm sure there'll be lots of stuffed animals and lunch boxes <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. But what happens now? Yeah, I mean, it basically is out of our hands. The, the filmmaking part of it is done. And uh, so now we will uh, maybe take a little take a vacation. vacation? Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you already, Looking. Are you, already <laughs> you know, getting ready for your, your next big project? Yeah, I think when, once we come back from vacation, we, we will. We'll, we'll start thinking about it and probably head back into development and uh, hopefully come up with another great movie. And again, this, this four or five year time frame, that's what it takes to, to get it all right? It yeah. does, and, I, and again, it's, it's, it, that's from development idea, a germ of an idea, all the way to final film. Yeah. And the truth is, it's, it's not really that long when you think about it, because it's really coming up with the entire story and script and everything in that time frame. So, um, but yeah, that's it, four or five years. Yeah. Exciting story. Uh, happy birthday. Thank you. I hope you get a fun happy monster's birthday. cake or something like that. <laughs> I did.